Hi, welcome to the video, and on Tuesday, GameStop jumps another 90% above $140, but short sellers aren't backing down. In this video, I'm going to go over what exactly is happening. It's something called a short squeeze. We'll talk about all of the catalysts that resulted in this very insane price action, and now it's actually over $200 in the aftermarket hours, which is complete insanity. And finally, whether or not it's too late to get in and what I'm going to do. I will be reading this article from CNBC that I think does a good job of summing up the events thus far and interjecting with my thoughts. Let's get right to it. GameStop popped again on Tuesday after a wild session pushing the stock back above $140, but short sellers betting against the brick and mortar video game retailer are nowhere near letting up. Shares of GameStop jumped 92.7% to $147.98 on Tuesday after trading as high as $150 during the session. The stock turned sharply higher after Social Capital's Chamath Palapataya said in a tweet that he bought GameStop call options betting the stock will go higher. Trading was halted multiple times due to volatility. Here's Chamath at 10.32 a.m. saying that he bought February $115 calls on GME this morning. And we can see right after he bought it, the stock started to inch back up. Now this isn't probably just because of him. It was probably inching up anyways, but let's rewind a bit. So what has been happening to result in this vertical type movement? So it's something called a short squeeze. And a short squeeze is when there are not enough shares for short sellers to close out their positions. So essentially what happened is that large funds and short sellers do something called short selling stocks. And what short selling a stock means that they are borrowing and selling shares, let's say on a present day for a certain price, assuming that this stock price is going to drop down later. So let's say many months ago when GameStop was around $20 or so, maybe some short sellers decided that they believe GameStop is actually a $5 or $3 stock. So what they'll do is they'll borrow money to buy GameStop at $20 and to sell it at $20. And assuming that GameStop drops to let's say $5, they will buy the stock back at a later date at $5 and they would make that difference of $20 minus $5 would be $15. But short selling only works if the stock drops and you can buy the stock back at a cheaper price. Because remember, you are taking out a loan essentially. You are borrowing the stock at its current price that you are assuming will be higher than its future price. What happened with GameStop though is that a lot of people on Reddit and specifically Wall Street Bets and just regular retail investors decided that they actually like GameStop at least more than these big institutional funds. Former Chewy CEO Ryan Cohen actually took a 10% stake into GameStop and he has a much more modern vision for GameStop and retail investors decided that they like GameStop and they want to invest in it. So as GameStop bullish sentiment was building, we started seeing a slow rise in the GameStop shares. But what was happening on Wall Street from the short seller size was that their conviction that GameStop is not a good company conviction was also growing and thus began the battle between regular people and the institutions. And what people on Reddit realized that if they organize together and they all decide to buy more and more GameStop shares, the retail investors will actually not have the shares to be able to buy back later and sell back. What the retail investors now had because they had organization, they had numbers, all together they had a lot more capital, they could actually buy back more shares than were available. Because what the short sellers had done was they had borrowed more shares than were available. And remember, they have to be able to buy back the shares. If there are not enough shares to buy back, what does that mean? That means that demand for shares will increase. People from Wall Street Bets, retail investors, continued buying shares and they just kept holding and this drove up price and short sellers who need to be able to buy back shares cheaper started to lose money because remember they had borrowed money and sold at let's say $20 but now that 
GameStop shares were at $30, $40, $50, they would be forced to buy back the shares at more expensive than what they initially sold it at. They have no choice if they want to leave their positions. And it turns out that the short sellers downside, how much they could lose is unlimited. That is the risk of short selling because if GameStop ends up, let's say at $300 and they borrowed and sold it at $20, they would have a net loss of $280. And as long as GameStop continues to go up, short sellers will continue to lose money. And the problem is that even as of right now, there are still not enough shares because the retail investors have been very, very stubborn and organized and they continue to buy and the short sellers continue to buy and the shares of the GameStop just continue to go up. Basically, that's what happened. I hope that makes sense. In summary, both sides need more shares. There's not enough. Therefore, GameStop stock price continues to get pushed up or squeezed up. And this is happening so fast and aggressively that trading was actually halted. Meaning if you were staring at the stock, if you were looking at the options, you actually wouldn't be able to make any purchases because volatility was just too high. There's too much swings based on all the action. Back to the article, the stock kept ripping higher in extended trading on Tuesday, surging more than 60%. The after hours jump came after Elon Musk commented on the mania on Twitter and linked to the infamous Wall Street bets. Reddit chat room with over 2 million subscribers. The Tesla CEO tweeted to his 42 million followers, GameStock. So here we can see the tweet that Elon did. Uh, this is about three hours ago. So it was right after market closed and he even linked to Wall Street Bets. And here, this is when you can see the final move of the day, which was even crazier than what happened throughout this whole day, which was starting at a little after 4.10 p.m. after Elon tweeted. It went from $147 to $243. $3. Now let's actually take a look at the stock. So one of the most popular options people were buying recently was the $115 strike call option. Just a couple of days ago, you could get this strike price for about $1,000 to $2,000. So as of market close, when GameStop was at $150, you would have profited a couple thousand dollars depending on what your price was. Now that GameStop has increased another $70, $80, my guess is that this contract right here, the $115 strike price contract, is probably worth twice as this, seven or $8,000. That's insanity. That's crazy. GameStop does not fundamentally deserve this valuation. This is a short squeeze. It's real, but it's also artificial, meaning it's not because people are truly excited about this company. It's more about supply and demand. It's really that simple. But yes, you could have made a lot of money, especially if you started buying GameStop weeks or even months ago when it was like barely $10, $15. This is insane. If you're holding GameStop stock now, I would definitely start selling to take some profit. But there's a lot of people that think this could go all the way up to $1,000. It's really hard to say. All I know is that it's super, super volatile. So it could go up a lot. It could also go down. Um, it really depends on how much longer the retail investors can hold and how much more short selling can happen from the other side as well, because they are actually also doubling down. So this is a battle between the retail investors, the bullish people and the short sellers that could go on for quite some time. Back to the article, short sellers also reloaded bets over the last seven days where shorted shares jumped by more than 900,000 worth $69 million. The data showed GameStop's short interest stands steadily at 139% unchanged from a week ago. 139% means that there is more short interest than there are shares. The explosive rally in GameStop was largely driven by the buying frenzy among individual investors active in online forums. One Reddit trending post on Tuesday features a screenshot of the user's portfolio showing an over 1000% return on GameStop stock. Quote, as the stocks go higher, more stocks is bought to cover for increasing short deltas. It's a market inefficiency and it eventually ends when those that have sold the calls are overhedged for a stock no longer existing and they need to actually sell to stay delta neutral. This cannot last forever. At some point, somebody needs to blink. Somebody will need to start selling. And when that happens, there will be people left holding the bag. Not everybody can make the insane profits that it stands to be right now at 220 
$23. But the question is, how long will this last? And it's anybody's guess. It's really hard to say. One of the biggest losers in all this so far is a hedge fund called Melvin Capital Management, which has a big short position on GameStop. And it's actually fallen 30% this year through Friday. A large majority of their losses coming from shorting GameStop. And if you remember my explanation, their losses can continue because it's unlimited. The higher GameStop goes, the more money they will lose. So that's basically it. We went over the catalysts for today. These are catalysts that nobody can predict. The fact that Tremont got into it, the fact that Elon tweeted about it, that's just a stroke of luck for everybody holding this position. That's amazing. And um, this is why I personally am actually not in this position. There's just too many variables outside of my control. And for me, my personal risk profile, I am already in about 15 or 20% what I would say riskier positions. So my tolerance for risk is that 15 or 20%. It's hard for me to justify opening a new position because I'm just not comfortable with that. Even though I believe that GameStop potentially still has a lot of room to run, the stress and the potential downside of losing everything is not something I'm super interested in. But for the people that are wondering if it's too late to get into it now, I would lean towards saying yes. I've had a lot of my friends and people ask me uh, if they should get into it. And I've always said that you shouldn't play with this type of short squeeze. It's just too risky. But on the flip side, for most moves like this, I would always encourage people that they're welcome to try as long as you are putting in an amount of money that you are 100% okay with losing that isn't going to make you lose sleep. I do think there's room for this short squeeze to continue to run up, especially if I read the forums. People are really, really stubborn and this is good for everybody that's already in this position. It has been a very, very big run up. So for every day that passes, I would be less likely to go in, but it's completely up to you. I think it's very, very risky, but there is something happening here. And uh, it's kind of cool to watch because for a long time, short sellers and these big hedge funds have been the ones in control of the market because they just had the money, they had the resources, they have the power, but due to modern technology, due to Reddit, due to being being able to communicate with each other, regular people, retail investors actually have power. And this is really, really cool to see. And people are viewing this like a battle. So if you want to go to battle and you're okay with potentially losing some money, sure, go for it. This is going to be something that will go down the history books as potentially a turning point. But yeah, that's all I have. Best of luck to everybody that's still in this position. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation or how much longer you think this short squeeze is going to last. I'd love to know your thoughts and comments. This is Green Knight Trading, where squires become knights. I appreciate you and I'll see you soon.